matchup in title. So here he is, the number one flyweight contender, looking to change that title here in 25 minutes or fewer and lead as the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world. What a run to contention it has been for this young man. He has put together a long winning streak. He's got the finishes to make the fans happy. He's done everything to position himself for this type of championship opportunity. Now, under the lights, we'll see what he can do with it. So here he is, the UFC's reigning, defending, undisputed UFC flyweight champion, making the walk for another defense here tonight. And if he wants to be mentioned with some of this division's greats of all time, and really with some of the greats of all time, this is one he's got to have here tonight. As the title defenses start to pile up, you can be mentioned in the conversation with guys like Demetrius Johnson. So here we go, another title defense here at 125. We'll see how it goes for the reigning champ. Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Four years apart, and they both possess a similar height and reach. And now to get us started, here's Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the Octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's time! Five rounds for the UFC Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding professional record of 25 wins, five losses. He stands five feet five inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the challenger, Alejandre the Cannibal Pantoja. And now, introducing the champion, Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 20 wins, six losses, and two draws. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world. at all time, but we my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. So the fight is now underway. We'll see how long it goes. You've got a submission specialist on one side and on the other side. Maybe the most well-rounded fighter in this division. Yeah, he is one of the best fighters in the entire UFC. But in front of him, he has one of the most dangerous fighters across all divisions in the octagon. Because that one skill he has is so good that you're, un you're in danger the entire... Well, kind of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Big punch landed over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Now he gets a more dominant position with the underhook. He is gonna start to drive knees over and over. You gotta be careful here, you gotta move. Big leg kick lands. He just missed with the left there. Straight to the body there by Moran. 
single collar tie here. It's big ball for punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Oh, huge block. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Oh, look at that head snap back as he connects with another uppercut. Not the first time he's landed that weapon tonight. That's his best shot, man. He's so good at it. He's so good at finding it. And when you think you got a beat on the right uppercut, he shifts his weight off to the side and lands it on the left side. What a great understanding of landing that punch. The center line slips the punch. Nice punch lands. Boy, tight club. Oh, he got absolutely bludgeoned. That's as good a combination as we have seen out of him here tonight. The last time I saw a combination this good, it was Donald Cerrone beating up on Rick Stewart. Nice defense there. Huge block. Got that tie clinch. He gets to his spot, the tie clinch. Then he starts to let the knees fall. And he lands a punch there. Pretty good connection by him. Great connection. He's in a great flow right now. That right hand hurt him a little bit. Oh, tagged him with the uppercut. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Nice leg kick land. Drive his shin into his opponent's body with that body. Oh, man, look, the uppercut snaps his head back yet again. His coaches are livid. They've tried to give him the right messaging in terms of adjusting. He hasn't been able to execute. He's not listening. At time, they fighter will make a determination, even if it's not in their best interest, to fight a certain way. That is what he's doing tonight, and he's definitely paying for it. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if there's more where that came from. Boxing, boxing, boxing. Lands the overhand right. Single collar tie now. Huge knee lands for the tight And both guys really throwing with authority. Here he is back in the clinch. And they separate. Oh, significant strike attempt there, but a huge block. Over and over, he landed a big body kick. Nice punch there. All right, so he's landed a few similar uppercuts already, DC. You gotta think he goes back to it. I am almost certain he's gonna go and try to find another one of them. But Expect him to really set down and try to make one really count to try to end this fight. Oh, he did a great job of rotating him into an underhook. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never... Oh, nice scramble by him there. Takedown defense on point. He is a master in transition. Five minutes in the books. A lot of high-level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. All right, so here we go with our next round. DC, you are known for having one of the higher fight IQs in the game. And I would put him on that list after what we saw in terms of the body work there in the previous round. He did a fantastic job of mixing up his target, not headhunting, going to the body, making that investment into forcing a mistake later that will allow him to chase his finish. Oh, body kick attempt here, it's no good. 
and he oh. comes through with a big knee. Oh, big knee! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, big left. That one was thrown to end the fight. Yep. <laughs> Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to it fully. He throws his jab, he may float a right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's gotta be confident that it's going to land, and he's gotta really throw his whole entire body into those strikes. Like he might have landed there. Instead, a swing and a miss by the assassin baby, Brandon Moreno. Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. Oh, and he connects there. His hands look good to him. So fast. I mean, this guy has tremendous hand speed. Oh, he hurt a bad with the jab. Moreno gets hit with a kick. Just over three minutes to go. Right single collar tie now. Well, he has really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive than we saw in round one. And now starting to find himself in the pocket. Good stick. Hook. Hook to the head, lands flush there by Brandon Moreno. Good series of strikes for him there, staying busy and staying accurate. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. Just misses there with the left. Nice body kick right under the elbow. He blocks the shot. Another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection, and these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Moreno gets caught with that punch, gotta shore up the defense here. Pretty significant welt to the left side. Flush right hand is true. Timely defense there, huge block for him. He loaded up that right hand too. What a punch. on that offering. 30 seconds to go in the round. Oh, he has landed a high volume of strikes in this round and really hasn't let up when it comes to his aggressiveness. The striking has been on point every step of the way. Careful to not gas out, but you gotta like the output here down the stretch. Ooh, big shot lands. Ten minutes in the books. All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my telestrator right now. That was a great display 
of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. All right, the action continues here and now as our next Ready? round gets Ready? underway. The previous round won't be confused for a round of the year, but pretty good action. It was a pretty good round. Not every round is going to have you standing up out of your seat. You understand that you are watching the highest level of fighting in the entire world in the UFC. throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. All right, so a good job by him here. He continues to block these shots. Seems to see them coming a mile away. He sees them coming a mile away, and he's blocking, he's rolling, he's slipping. He's doing a great job. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Single collar tie there. Again, they will clinch. Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. There's no give on that leg kick. The next with a right. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Slips to avoid the right. Oh! Big shots exchanged in the pocket there. Looks like his leg is hurt here. You can even see him limping a little bit. Good punch lands. I mean, he's cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Well, you didn't see a lot of the body work from him in the earlier rounds, but he's certainly getting after it here. Big shot to the body connects there. We'll see if he can follow it up. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. And there comes the separation now. Ooh, what a punch. Right hook to the head block. Nice head kick. Got the single collar tie. Nice shot inside by the champion. Counters with a left. Oh, and now the underhook, DC. He's got the underhook. He's got the far side post. If you're the opponent, you have got to get out of here. Visibly limping here. Both fighters here continuing to try to get a more dominant position in the clinch, getting fatigued in the process, I would think. It's very taxing to beat chest to chest, a position we call 50-50 because nobody has the advantage. Who's going to be the one to find that one little area that they can expose to give them the slightest advantage. Straight punch land. Oh, single collar tie here. Left punch is clean, followed by a right. A oh, really good job by him there to raise the guard, DC, and block those shots coming his way. He does a great job of blocking all incoming strikes. Touched by that kick there. 
A little struggle here now for position in the clinch, and we see a lot of these situations in mixed martial arts where both fighters sort of end up getting comfortable here when there isn't a whole lot going on. And the moment somebody gets comfortable, the moment that somebody decides to relax, the moment you'll see a takedown or somebody really speed out ahead of their opponent, you got to be aware when you're chest to chest in this 50-50 position. All right, well, the crowd enjoyed those five minutes. DC, take us through some of the highlights from that previous round. Face punching at its best. Ha. He loaded it up, he threw it straight, threw it long, and over and over, that punch found the target. It allowed him to really dictate the pace of that round. You ready? You ready? Strong defense there to block the shot. Nice instincts. And he landed the right hand there. Just missing on the uppercut there. Moreno gets tagged with a kick now. Let's see if he can rally. Big liver kick lands under the elbow. Right hand punches the clinch. Man, look at the size of that bruising on his body. Oh. Big punch lands through the middle. Huge block there. Ooh, head kick lands. He's hurt. All oh, collar tie. You don't know when that leg kick's coming. A huge block there. Big punch land. March on, three minutes to go. He comes forward with a flying knee that just missed hitting the target flush. And he connects there, DC. Great job landing that punch. Well, at this point, he's got to be way up on the judges' scorecards, clearly winning the fight, and largely has gotten it done with his striking team. Got it done with a strike. He fought well behind the jab, but it was a significant strike that really did make an impact on the judge's body. Looking to land the leg kick now. Right, he engages in a single collar tie here. He changes the angle, finds the right spot to land that punch to the head from the clinch. Well, it's all pace and pressure down the stretch. He is really lighting him up now. How good is that right hand? He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. All right, so again, we find ourselves here in the clinch, where there are obviously no shortage of subtleties and nuances, a lot of motions in here that maybe are lost on the casual thing. Absolutely, and it's going to be the underhook. For all the things that happen in this position, the person winning and controlling the underhook battle is the one out ahead. Stuff to take down, no problem. Oh, that's a nice strike. Oh, good opportunity to do damage here. He's got that tie clinch. Blocks the shot. Single collar tie now. And they separate. One minute to go. Towards the right hand there. Well, if you're going to leave your body that wide open, you're going to pay the price, and he certainly did there as his opponent lands flush to the midsection. 
All right, so a good job defensively by him here as he raises the guard and prevents any damage. Shades of James Tony. Always seeing things coming at him. He's such a great defensive fighter. All right, single power timeout. Great punch landing with so much power. 30 seconds now to go in the round. Can't take many of those, you better check. You take more of these leg kicks, you will not be able to be very active on your feet. Oh, tags him with the left. That left hand has been really effective tonight. Twenty minutes down, potentially five to go. All right, now we take a look back at some of the highlights he has had his kicking game going early and often tonight. I mean, on point, right? He knew that this was going to be a way for him to take control of this fight. He's used those kicks to really put him out ahead, and I'm not sure if his opponent has the ability to adjust and stop him from landing these over and over. All right, so after he landed a high number of kicks in the previous round, we'll see if he can keep it going here as our next round gets under. He should stay the course. He's so educated with his legs and his feet that he's given his opponent a very difficult time trying to anticipate what's coming his way. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Huge block! Oh, big punch land. He's back to his spot, the punch position. He just hurt him with a left hook, yep. Man, the body work really starting to take its toll here. Obvious redness on that right side. Shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of diverse strikes. Nice punch lands over the top. And they separate. All right, so both fighters now sort of struggling for position here in the clinch. When you find yourself in this situation, what do you do to get out of it? Anytime it's very tough, anytime you're chest to chest, and you have nowhere to go, I think to myself, underhook. Whoever's winning the underhook is winning the clinch battle. Oh, counters with a beautiful left hand. Timely defense there, huge block for him. Now he's got the Muay Thai clock. And they separate. Nice strike. Back to the left hand now, unable to connect. Got clipped with the right hand. Caught the kick. Well, they've made all the right reads here tonight, and there's another one. Beautiful read on the leg strike as he catches it and then returns fire with a punch of his own. So they have got the timing down here at this point of the fight. Big right hook coming, it's blocked. Two minutes and counting to go in this fight. And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. Boy, tie plump. And they separate. Good punch. Immediately gets the underhook. Now he's got the Muay Thai plump. Whiffs on the straight right hand. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. Oh, 
Slip. Oh! He's in trouble. He's getting lit up. 20. Oh! looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. So holding on to him here, not doing a ton, perhaps just looking to recover. Beautiful punch. So inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Ooh, all right, he's got the full mount now, DC, and he has proven to be a hard guy to buck off from this position. Oh, because he's so heavy. He keeps his weight down. He really does grind on you with his with his bottom half. He doesn't do anything with his arms. His arms are free to punch. He's collecting you with his hips and his legs, making you make a determination as to whether or not you want to get grounded upon into the mat or if you're going to give your back up where he will then start to chase chokes. A lot of energy expenditure defensively if you are the bottom fighter in this equation. All right, so there it is, the final horn, a lifetime of work, all building to this moment, and the underdog challenger comes up large with his striking game tonight. He's going to be the new champ. I mean, he came up big in a massive spot. He was the underdog. He wasn't supposed to get this done. He relied on what got him here, the striking, to take the title from the long-reigning champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest. 48-47. Clearing the winner by unanimous decision. And new undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world, Alejandro the Cannibal Pantoja. Well, that title fight had it all. It goes the full 25 minutes, but in the end, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new UFC flyweight champion of the world as he wrests the belt away from the incumbent with style points here tonight.